Hello and welcome to the course. My name is Octoman and this is the concept video about the Ludo game we are going to create in this next couple of hours of this particular video course. So let's dive into it. At first, what is Ludo? Ludo is an old board game where you have a base with your, let's say, player stones. And once you hit a six or dice a six, you're gonna land on the first spot over here. So your yeah, let's say your stone is going to go out of the base. What we can now do is with whatever number we are going to dice between one and six, we're going to go up all these little fields over here. And we need to make our complete way around the playfield once. And whenever we are hitting this last tile of the outer route, I would say, you're going to go into your, yeah, let's say garage or whatever it is called. So the game idea in this case is, you need to get all your stones into your garage. So this is the main idea. And the point is all of the other players uh, are going to do or aim for the same goal. There are some rules inside the game field. For example, if you are going to be here with your stone and somebody else is coming to your field, your stone goes back to the base, no matter where it is on the outer route over here. Same for the other ones. You can also do the same to these guys. So if somebody is standing, like if the red guy is going to be over there and you hit it directly with a number uh, which is matching this field, he has to go back to the base and start from the beginning, from his start field, of course, and going the complete round until he's able to get this. And who is ever filling this base or this garage fields with all his stones is going to be the winner of the round. And all the other ones can basically come afterwards like whenever the second one is going to be the second one third one third one and the last you know it's going to be the last one so even if he's not matching or actually fitting inside his garage okay so now you know what's going on with ludo in this case i have a mini version over here as on my on my image but usually this is going to be played with four stones instead of two this is just for let's say per testing purposes and of course for you how to learn this once again in the end we're gonna have four of each stone basically for each color of the base and that's what we are going to do okay so let's talk about the mechanics behind the game how what we're going to do in this particular course what we're gonna learn of of course and what we are after gonna zoom out a bit so what we are going to start with is the game manager so the game manager is basically keeping track of who is going to be actually the next player or who's the current players and so on and so forth also uh, we are going to create a state machine based on different states uh, the players can or have to be in like one state in particular can be roll the dice then we have a waiting state where we are waiting for example for input or or the calculations uh, done by the cpu we're going to talk about that in just a second as well as probably waiting for humanized in or human inputs whenever we have a human player so this is what the state machine is doing it's switching the states between whatever we are currently in and of course go back to wherever it has to be switching to the next player and all the other stuff is going to be like that so this is all what the state machine is going to be about nothing more i would say also the game manager keeps track on all the possible players on and the player in some kind of player list then we're gonna have each player each entity i would say or each player has his own stones a name and of course what is the type of this particular player like human or cpu so and of course all of these stones are going to be this part over here all the stones know about all their own routes they're gonna be calculated automatically based on this starting field of the space and whatever all the nodes are going to be it's like uh, this is node number zero in this case when a player you know player yellow and of course we're gonna take care of all the steps meaning what is the dice number we have actually rolled and then uh, count everything downwards so we are reducing steps as well as reaching our point sooner or later so the stones keep track of, of our of themselves report back to the state machine whenever they are done uh, doing this job like moving from one point to another and so on and so forth and so the the circle goes on so this is what we are going to create code wise and let's just talk about pretty quick about the CPU because this is going to be a rather interesting one. 
I'm gonna skip the or keep back the human for a second. So whenever we are a CPU player, we want to make sure that we are able to roll the dice. And what we need to know now is uh, what is going to be the rolled number. So the CPU knows, okay, I have rolled a six or I don't have rolled a six. If we have a roll the six, we need to make sure that nobody is on the base field. So if one is on the base field, then we're gonna make sure that we are testing if the node is empty. Like once again, the base field is going to be this one over here, yes, so the very first one. For the red one, it's going to be this. For the blue, it's going to be this. For the green, of course, it's going to be this. So whenever this base node is empty, we can actually send out the next stone. So we talk to our stone, which is currently uh, the next one. We're gonna pick this one and send this one out by code. Then we're gonna do a reroll because we had a six. And this is also another rule which we can make use this and that way. And there are several possibilities for doing this. So in this case, when we are going out, we're gonna do reroll so we can actually make another one. Reroll means we just go back to the roll dice functionality, like basically we go from the state machines part back to rolling the dice instead of switching the next player. So whenever the base node is not empty, we're going to have uh, two possibilities for that. So the first one is we are going to have the same ID of the stone. So it's our own stone. Then we need to make sure that we're going to check for with the with another stone, basically. And I need to check what our other yeah, possibilities to move another stone instead of moving out because we need to make sure that the base is always clear. Like we don't or we shouldn't have one stone whenever we are trying to go out on the base. But we keep the base as it is so we can basically keep it also on this uh, the space. Also, there are other rules which are saying, okay, you never have to stay on one base tile or uh, on the base node in this case. So... There are several possibilities to play Ludo in total. So we're going to check if we can kick somebody. So once again, the CPU is checking. Can I kick somebody with any of my already outplayed stones? And if that is possible, of course, if it is kickable, then we're going to move the one which can do the kick. Otherwise, if there's no kickable, we're going to check if there are possibles. We're going to basically do this in here. And you make use of the next possible stone. Um, or in this case, if there are more than... Uh, several possibilities we're gonna move a random one so we gonna keep this randomized basically and then when we are done with that we're gonna switch the player but we can also if we have let's say we moved or we had a initial six over here we could also perform a re-roll once again this is something we can or you can later on decide on your own since you will understand how this is going to work usually i'm gonna go and switch the player even if i have rolled a six so i keep that uh, a bit let's say more yeah, more interesting, especially for small games. It is probably better to switch the player early. Uh, once again, you can also keep the six rules. So meaning if somebody yeah rolls the six, we can or had rolled the six before, we can also use a re-roll. So basically, we're going to do the same as here. We're going to move instead of moving out, we're going to move our stone. And instead of uh, switching the player, we're going to see um, uh, what's, whatever the input has been or the number has been. If it has been a 6, we can do the re-roll. If it not has been a 6, then we're going to switch the player. This is also possible. Nothing fancy at all. So, and if nobody is in the base... We're going to once again go from this node, like when we have one in the base. And if we don't have one in the base, of course, we're going to check for all the possibilities and kickables and so on and so forth. And if we have n another number than uh, six, then of course, we're going to do the same route from here. That's why I painted these arrows to this point. So basically, this is what the CPU is going to do. And yeah, once again, we need to make sure that we have at least one in the base. Otherwise, this complete part is going to be unnecessarily. So uh, this gets skipped and we have none in the base. Of course, we're going to take all the outs plate uh, yeah, stones and going to make sure that they are movable. Okay, and when it comes to human, then we're gonna uh, need some input, actually. So at first, we want to make sure that we're gonna get a button activated whenever uh, the human has its turn. And whenever we're pressing this button, we're gonna roll the dice, of course. So whenever we are ha having a six, we want to make sure 
that we highlight every possible stone, no matter which one. So even if it is outplayed or is still in the base, depending on that, basically we're going to make use of the same rules as the CPU does. We're going to highlight those. And what we also want to do is, of course, we want to make sure that we are making them selectable, like we can actually click on one of these stones whenever they are highlighted with a circle or something around them. And or any other kind of highlight system, you can play around with that later on. And whenever we are doing a, an input, we're going to perform the same action and, of course, do the same uh, calculation over here, like as we have done over there. Whenever we are done with the movement, of course, we want to make sure that we are switching the player or we're going to do a reroll, depending on if we have used the 6 or not. Once again, this is what we can take care of or talk about later on nothing fancy at all if it is not a six we're gonna make sure that we're gonna check if there's any possible turn at all so we once again we highlight the possibles but at the same time we also see if there is no possible thing of course we want to make sure that we are switching the player as well as whenever we are not rolling the six we still want to highlight the possible ones and keep on the same route over here so nothing fancy with that i guess so the player input is going to be the easy one since it basically just copies parts of the complete yeah CPU calculated stuff over there. So this is our roadmap for our complete yeah game actually and uh, there might be some rules we're going to implement later on or of course if you have any questions to implement several different things feel free to ask them in the comments or whatever it's called the Q&A section for example or you can just leave a message for me. So let's start with the course. I hope you're going to get the idea over here and let's dive directly into it.